Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I'm Tundra Abiola. I'm Veronica Decker. Welcome back. And I'm Viola Alabi. You beat me. Ah! <laughs> so Everyone, we're so excited to have her here. I'm so, so excited to have her here. <laughs> Ibidri Godalo Foundation had their second parents in waiting conference yesterday at Muson Center. Tag at Magbe Temijo, Alkari, and Dance with My Own. This is like a full on your right okay. yeah. All right, uh, Veronica, we're going to no, no, no. We're gonna have a full on yeah. um, Day or what? what Delta. You, Delta Day. Yeah. But what do you speak, Shakiri? No. Okay. We'll, we'll come and learn. <laughs> we'll, we'll come and learn. Uh, topics highlighted in the conference where fertility, health, fibroids, and pregnancy took the front stage. Let's take a quick look at the video we have. The joy of motherhood is considered to be the center of every adult woman's life. That classic picture of a woman cuddling and nursing a baby is considered not only universal, but also traditional and divine. However, this picture of happiness has not been shared by every woman because of certain biological issues bordering on infertility. How to begin to change that has been a major concern for the Ibidon Igodalo Foundation. I am God is committed to you. He won't let you down. For the second year running, this foundation embarked on a medical outreach for people who share the all too familiar story of infertility and pregnancy disorders. It all started with a free medical examination session for everyone present. The significance of this gesture was not lost on the beneficiaries. I'm actually very impressed. I mean, the setting is good and they are well organized and I mean it's starting off very well so I'm hoping that it will end well as well. I see myself achieving my hope, my aim of becoming a mother in life through this uh, platform. I really appreciate the uh, Ibido Inigodalo um, Foundation. I, I just pray that God will bless her. That turn of gratitude was brought to the floor of the conference where experiences were relayed and professional insights given by various speakers about the best ways of treating and managing infertility and its stigmas. There are some people that have this fibroid, they come down with so much heavy medicine that they need to be admitted. It comes in some cases that they have with so much that they need to be on admission for medications. At the same time, they also try to get pregnant. So all these factors come into play and we need to look at this and look at what can we do about it if I have fibroids. I've been told, I know some of you that have done a lot of scans, uh, some people have had IVF treatments before, they've had so many fertility treatments before. The issues are, are, and it doesn't matter the options that are also available, the important thing is that we have our children, so let our hearts be open to adoption. Because for what, just what if some child is born, the parents can't take care of, and they're sent to an orphanage, and God is nudging your own heart to go and grab that child, into your home and to raise. What if the cure for cancer is locked on the inside of that child that nobody wants? Many of those that attended this conference are proven managers of main and resources and people of means. Every one of them recognizes the commitment of the convener in giving back to society. I think it's, um, it's a very, very laudable um, program and uh, I'd like to uh, thank God for her life and uh, that of her husband who's giving her support uh, for such a program. I think we need many more of such uh, because it's such a heavy expenditure. Ibido Igodalo says that this project derives from her own personal experience and vows to continue to invest in it, no matter the odds. It was my journey, my journey through infertility. I have been married for 12 years and I have gone to different hospitals they have prescribed all sorts of medications and all sorts of things have been said. And I found out that not everybody has the opportunity to know exactly what the issues are, to even know what the problem is. A lot of people get married and they hope that in a year or two they'll get pregnant, but that never happens. And once that never happens, they start to do screening but some of these tests are so expensive they can't even afford it i mean you can do the basics but when you, when it comes to fertility screening it's, it's quite very expensive so i decided that you know what if i'm going to start this foundation i'm also going to help with those kind of tests topics that were highlighted in this conference are fertility health 
fibroids and pregnancy, male factor infertility, emerging IVF technologies, and enjoying sex while waiting. Charles Ohoku, Arise News, Lagos, Nigeria. A good number of Nigerian women are currently living under a cloud, many of them bogged down by their spirit, by their inability to bear a child. Among those, these women are those who, at one time or the other, have caved into pressure and gone ahead to explore all forms of unconventional, unconventional medication in a bid to achieve pregnancy. Some have succeeded, others haven't. But in a country where the cost of living continues to spiral out of reach, of the average family, many people in dire need of the newest technologies for assisted motherhood simply have not been able to afford them. And that's the narrative that Ibidun Igodalu has been fighting to change. She is a wife of the, of the senior pastor of Trinity House Church, Lagos, Itua Igodalu, a former beauty queen, successful businesswoman, brand ambassador, and founder of Ibidun Igodalu Foundation. Ibidun, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so good to have you, it and is. it is so emotional to mm -hmm. watch that video. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that um, when I saw what you did last year, and when I saw again what you did this year, I was so proud and inspired um, as someone that personally that has gone through infertility and that has also had um, ch challenges conceiving. I felt that one of the things that happens in Nigeria is that when you're in this situation, there's so much stigma attached to it. There's so many people that have a lot of audacity to be to invade your personal life, your personal yeah. space. I mean, when you when you started to have this experience, your personal experience, how did you sort of get through that to get into the space where you're you're able to reach back and help other people? Uh, I mean, initially, I like every every girl. I thought as soon as I'm married, a year or two, I'll have my mm -hmm. kids you know, and a year passed, the second year, and I was still quite, you know, just having fun because mm -hmm. I had, you know, like, looked after myself while mm -hmm. I was in school, mm -hmm. and I felt like, okay, I was ready for the next stage of my life, and I started getting worried at the third year, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, okay, what's going on? And people have their own definition of how you should live your life, what mm -hmm. you should do. And just even before I started to think and get worried, they had already started telling me, I mean, we all know Pastor Ito was married before, mm -hmm. so they had already started telling me, oh, he was married before and he didn't have kids, so be ready that the same thing is going to happen to you. And I thought to myself, you, you can't say that to me, mm -hmm. you know? But that in itself started putting me under a bit of pressure. You know, something that I would never have thought about. I mean, I, had, I would have just said, okay, I mean, that, that was then. Mm -hmm. This is now. And I, I started going to hospitals, they're going to test, and I discovered that I fell into that category of infertile woman. And people would walk up to you and say things like, and you know when you get married, your weight fluctuates a bit, yeah. you know, you, you put on weight, because you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> you're happy you're cooking. Yes. <laughs> so, and then, oh, you put on weight, I'm sure you're pregnant, you know? And you probably just finished crying at home because mm. you just saw your period. Yeah. Mm. 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 Or somebody calls and says, oh, um, I, was, I was, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday and they said, oh, have you seen Ibidun lately, you know? What's happening? We've done this wedding two years, you know, and mm. what was, what, yes. I haven't heard about yes. the twins. Yeah. An aunt of mine came to the house, and because I love dogs, I love puppies, Veronica, you know, yes. you've seen them before. Yeah. <laughs> and at a time, my, my puppy had 15 puppies. Oh. So I was still just looking after them, and she comes into the house and she says, no wonder you're not concerned about having kids when you're mm. busy breeding dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those things are so hurtful. Mm, 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 mm. And sometimes your friends have kids, they have birthday parties, and you go, you want to carry a baby, and somebody's saying to you, oh, you have to carry the head a certain way, and somebody says, oh, she probably would not know how to carry it because she's never had one. Mm. But, I mean, I have to say, I mean, that's sort of the, that's the, that's the life if you've been married in Nigeria mm -hmm. and you haven't conceived within sort of the first 
there's an allowed time. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't time. happen, doesn't happen. Yes. then, then everyone come. sort of then starts to um, invade your space. And you do mm -hmm. feel, I mean, it is claustrophobic because you do, so you, I mean, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a very private person, mm -hmm. so I became more and more private. But I mean, you've taken that, mm -hmm. you've been able to turn it around You've opened your heart to so many different options. Yes. Um, the one thing I wanted to first of all talk about before I get to what, how is when you were going through the infertility treatment mm -hmm. itself, what was that journey like? Wow. And what was that sort of, the people you met along that journey, what, okay. was, that, what was that like? Um, I've done 11 IVFs in total. My goodness, from the first one I thought, okay, um, I discovered that I, I had blocked tubes mm -hmm. and this happened when I was 16. Mm. I had a surgery done. Uh, I, I had appendicitis and I had a surgery done. It was taken up, it wasn't done properly here in Nigeria. Mm. I then wow. developed infections and the infection blocked my tubes, mm -hmm. both tubes. So I can't have, except God does it in his own time, I, I have to do IVF, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. bypass the mm -hmm. tubes. I mm -hmm. try to open them mm -hmm. up. I've done mm -hmm. surgery to open them up. Mm -hmm. I've, I've cut the parts that are that are blocked, join them together. I've done all sorts of stuff before I eventually said, okay, you know what? Let me just go do mm -hmm. IVF. From the first one, my goodness, it is a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Your emotions, first the injections that they give you, mm -hmm. they take you like that. It's it's. It, it, you're moody. Mm. It, it, it just messes everything up, your whole system. But you have to take them for a set, like 30 days. Mm. And then you have to go for scans every day. So today you're happy because you, your eggs, you're responding to the injection. Mm. When it's time to harvest the eggs, when you get the news that out of 24 eggs, they could only get two good ones, your mood just, it, it, it's such a roller coaster. When they then, fertilize the eggs with the sperm. Some of them fertilize the first day, you're happy. You have to wait 24 hours for it to divide into two. Mm. You're waiting. Sometimes the cycle stops at fertilization. You have to start all over again. Mm. Sometimes it divides into two, then four, then eight before embryo transfer. Sometimes it stops at just eight. Sometimes it goes all the way. They do the transfer back. You have to wait two weeks to test whether you're pregnant. Sometimes it comes out negative. Before the two weeks, you start bleeding. All of the 11 IVFs, they, had, they, they come out with different results, but it's such a roller coaster. It's such a, it's pain. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. emotionally draining, mm -hmm. psychologically. You stop leaving. I, I actually stopped leaving. I was just existing. Mm -hmm. Because you just keep chasing after, you, you, you always it's think uh, the, next yeah. Yeah, the, next next the next one is going to work, the next one is going to work, the next one is going to work. The last one I did worked. I had mm. a set of twins, but I had a miscarriage at three months. That was very traumatic. Yes. Mm. It's one thing to not get pregnant and know how mm. it feels. It's another thing to eventually get pregnant and you're saying, oh my goodness. Yeah. And then you lose it. It was really bad. My hearts are with you with that. And this is the reason why okay. you then decided to, out of this, this need and this love yes. um, for your own situation, to start this foundation. Yes. So why don't you just share with us a little bit more about what the foundation does right. and how your journey has been able to help other women who are in need of services that they can't afford. Right. You know, when you've been through something, you understand the shoes every other people are wearing. Yes. So I decided that, you know what? It's such a difficult journey. During my time, during my own journey, I met a lot of women, hospitals who had complained bitterly mm -hmm. about the cost of that treatment, mm -hmm. who sometimes, I even just figured that they actually didn't just even need the IVF. Mm -hmm. Some people just needed mm -hmm. IUI or mm -hmm. even just tablets. Mm -hmm. But getting to the point where you know what the problem is mm -hmm. sometimes. You know I was praying on my birthday and I completely just, you know, I usually do what something, I take inventory of my life, mm -hmm. you know, the year before. Yeah. I have a note, I, I, myself and God, we talk and what I wrote that I wanted that year, and I just heard him say, just let everything go and leave it all to me. And while you're doing that, 
There are other people that are waiting that need, you mm -hmm. need to hold their hands. Yes. And that, you know, I felt something rise mm -hmm. inside of me. And I started the foundation and I said to myself, how am I going to afford this? Mm -hmm. Having to pay for people to go for this treatment, not only financial, we pray mm -hmm. together. Because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not even about money. Yes. Some of us are so nervous, mm -hmm. we're so tense because mm -hmm. of society yes. mm -hmm. that we feel that we're alone on this journey. Mm -hmm. Once you know that somebody's holding your hand, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. it's a lot easier. Which is it's, what, it's an isolating journey. Yes, mm -hmm. which is what helped. My husband was, was there with me. Yeah. He kept telling me, I didn't marry you mm -hmm. for children. Mm -hmm. yes. If God is not going to do it, let it be left undone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That really kept me going even mm -hmm. though I, as you know how we, we yes. women are we still want to carry yes, our own. own but you know that sense of somebody just being there with mm -hmm. me really helps I, felt, I, I knew that holding other women's hands mm -hmm. and walking this journey with them praying with them mm -hmm. providing the little support I can mm -hmm. no matter how small yeah. so it's both a spiritual spiritual financial, financial. and educational because yes. I noticed that when we did mm -hmm. watch the clip there were even men speaking and then there was another lady speaking about adoption and so you're educating the people yes. along the journey of what can be or, or the different options that are available yes to them yes that's what the foundation is about if you're doing your foundation is faith-based how would you address those who believe as because of their religious beliefs mm -hmm. that they cannot look into assisted reproductive technology at all how would you address those you know what we don't understand is Ultimately, knowledge comes from God. Mm -hmm. And it is God that gives us people power to know what to do. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, at every point, even doctors say to you, we can try, but God heals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the point of transfer, as soon as transfer is done, my doctors always told me, this is where our power stops. The next step mm -hmm. is Finish. all in God's hands. He's the one that would make that baby stay from the twins in your womb or if it's one child or triplets. He's the one. The Bible says he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. No child is a mistake. The first IVF baby was 40 years ago and since then we have 7 million babies who have come into existence because of this technology. Mm -hmm. How many homes has God blessed through that? Are we mm -hmm. now going to say it is not of God? Mm -hmm. That's a really important mm -hmm. point because a lot mm -hmm. of people do misrepresent what IVF is about mm -hmm. and they misunderstand it mm -hmm. and they see it as a lack of faith to mm -hmm. take that step. Yes. But it's actually mm -hmm. not. You're being proactive mm -hmm. and adoption yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have yes. to say, I, have, I, I mean, I've seen that whole that's changing dramatically mm -hmm. in Nigeria, and I'm sure a lot of the work you're doing yeah. is part of that. And just going to hospitals and seeing so many women now in waiting rooms, and also a lot of hospitals also um, offer you to pay for help other women pay right. when you get your treatment. That yes. was something that I was I was happy to see when mm -hmm. I was going through a lot of my treatment. One of the things I have to say is that we one of the things you said is diagnosis. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people don't even know what the yes. problem is. When you look at the people that come to the foundation and that yes. you help, what percentage of people would you say that you guys just really help them understand what the problem is? How is that split? About 30%. About 30%? Yes. Oh, wow. Some people, like the last conference we had, there was a lady who just came, who came and I had a lady talk about enjoying sex while you wait. Mm -hmm. You know, some women, our cervix are funny. Mm. It's, it's in a funny position. Mm. So when mm. you have sex, mm. if you don't mm. do it a certain way mm. or in a certain position, it would be difficult for the sperm to, to go in and, you know, like, mm. for you to get pregnant. She tried one of the methods that Pastor Ruth um, described, and she got pregnant. Mm. Yeah. So just simply just simple. understanding where your cervix so is, education. understanding what positions work best for Once you getting you pregnant. Education. Honestly, mm. that's it. It's as simple as that. There's another lady who's got, uh, my sister actually, my older sister, Toya, she waited for five years. Mm. She had polycystic disease of the ovaries. And everybody was saying, go and do IVF. My, all my sister needed were tablets. Mm. She has three boys now. Wow. wow. So are you saying that, um, or rather I would like to know, what are some of the questions if a woman 
or a couple feel that they are, I mean, haven't had a child and they're waiting for a child and they're mm -hmm. not sure, what are some of the questions or what is the first point of contact? Mm -hmm. Will it be your doctor? Um, you know, would it be a coming to a conference? Would it be your spiritual advisor? Who do you go to first and what do you ask? To begin, begin, to begin to figure out what the issue is. If you want to go through the foundation or you just want to know what is going on. Just that woman at home watching. Just saying I'm at home watching. I've and been I married think, a year. Yeah. I feel like I should be pregnant. What I'm should not. people be looking out for and saying? Once you're married for a year, mm -hmm. you need to go for a test. Both, both of you need to go for what you call screening. Okay, so that's first, the first step. That's the that. first step. Okay. Screening. Hormonal profile. Okay. And that can be done by any, that can be done by any you, GP. Yes, yes. you can okay. go to any hospital okay. to get that done. Mm -hmm. Once that is done, do you do scans to check your wombs to know that you mm -hmm. don't have fibroids? Mm -hmm. They would ask questions about your periods, mm -hmm. how regular it is, your cycle, and then they would do the sperm count test. Okay. That is the very tricky one. Most men don't like responding to that. They don't like going to the hospital to check that out. Mm -hmm. But you cannot rule male infertility out. Mm -hmm. These days, it is so high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were telling me you read an article. article. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was, um, an there article. was a Malaysian study yeah. this August. Nigeria has the highest incidence of male infertility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And things like toxins in the yeah. air, generator toxins. fumes, yeah. insecticides, yeah. Yes. even working on your laptop, on your lap as a man, is not advisable mm -hmm. because it causes infertility. Phones in your pocket, yes. all these factors. Phones in your pocket, drinking, smoking. If you're working in a factory that is really hot, mm -hmm. driving for more than four hours, and that happens a lot in Lagos, in yeah. traffic. Mm -hmm. That's every day. Mm -hmm. Your boxes mm -hmm. are too tight. Mm -hmm. A lot of, it's so sad, because mm -hmm. it's now that parents should start to look at their kids, mm -hmm. even the younger boys, mm -hmm. because this is where at it that age, that's where it starts. Mm. The quality of the sperm starts to drop. Yeah. Those are, you, it's such a, and here, like you said, toxins in the, our, our, you know, our environment is so. So polluted. So once you can get that out of the way, the sperm count is good. Some, some, some couples come out with unexplained infertility. Mm -hmm. Those ones are the ones that you know that, okay, you need to really calm down. Mm -hmm. You need to take your mind off these things. It might just be psychological. You're just really anxious. Yeah. Some of them you find out, like me, my tubes are blocked. Mm -hmm. Some of them you find out that the, the man has the problem. Mm -hmm. Once you can figure out what the so problem is, yeah. you will mm -hmm. be able to know what the next, what your options are. Mm -hmm. You know. So let me ask you this, why do you feel that, you know, with, we are in 2018, there's technology everywhere and people are more, more open to information. Why do you feel or do you feel that in our culture or in our country, we are still in that position of being nervous and fearful or even being adamant to say, I have had IVF or I am pursuing that. People are still, still like a hushed thing. I know people who've done IVF and they don't want to talk about it. You know, why is that, in your opinion? Because they're not allowed to be <laughs> out there telling people. <laughs> well, because she's, you know, yes. it's not, you're, you're one of I'm very one few. One of very and it's yes. very vocal yes. to talk about yes. your experiences. No, people true. don't. And this people is 2018. Don't. So why do you feel it is or why not? What is your experience with this? Shame. Mm. Mm. Actually, people are afraid mm -hmm. of being laughed at, of being made fun of. You know, people are because people refer to your baby as test tube baby, mm -hmm. glass baby. Mm -hmm. Are people still doing that? Oh yeah. So that's a test tube it. baby. That's a glass baby. So people don't want you to know that they're doing that. They just want you to think that the God just did it. Yeah. And honestly, if you keep doing that, how do yeah. you encourage other women? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I have one last question for you before mm -hmm. we go. One of the things that um, we saw one of the speakers talk about is adoption. Mm -hmm. um, what has been the progress that you feel that Nigeria is making on the f adoption front? What are the advice you have for people that are looking for to do mm -hmm. adoption? And um, who, are, um, who was the speaker that mentioned that during the um, video? Uh, Dr. Bode, um, Nigeria is, is going, uh, they're, they're trying when it comes to adoption. Mm -hmm. They have processes you have to go through, mm -hmm. you have to be able to pay your tax, mm -hmm. be able to look after those children, mm -hmm. you know, but people are still, they are running away from the stigma mm -hmm. of adopting children. Mm -hmm. People would rather steal children and mm -hmm. pretend that they were pregnant and wear the make-believe pregnancy 
outfits and tell you that they, were, they carry but their babies why are for nine months. Wasting time. Oh, why are yeah, we they doing do this? that. Of why course. Are we doing this? But it is. There's no shame mm. in these things. Our parents used to do adoption mm. long, many years ago. A lot of us, a lot, a lot of people grew up under my roof mm. that my dad looked after, that you would, they would send to their husband's house or their wife. Adoption, it was just never discussed. Mm. Mm. And it was never legalized. Mm. But you know, people don't, you have to learn to open your heart to other options. Mm. I am so happy. I have adopted. I have two kids, two mm -hmm. beautiful they children. Are, yeah. 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 I would not yeah. trade them for mm -hmm. anything in the world. I'm so happy and I'm so grateful. So people should just open up their hearts to options. There's surrogacy, there's adoption, there's IVF. You can't, you can't box yourself into a corner. You can't do that. Uh. Bino, thank you so much. Thank you you, you, so you started out as being the first face of Lux yes. as a model, and you have now today become a model for so many women. Yes. Thank you so much thank for being you. a source thank of you inspiration. Thank you for having me. Thank and you really, you're talking about things that we don't talk yes. about. Thank you so much thank for being you. here. Thank you. Thank you for having me.